Hello, a quarterly welcome from my side. I'm Dr. Volker Meissner, I'm the chairman of the German Academy of Energy Medicine and Bioenergetics. And I'd like to introduce you to the eighth symposium, which we are going to hold on 22nd and 23rd of June, 2013. We have a motto for this symposium, and the title is Quantum Physics Meet Holistic Medicine. And we have a subtitle as well. It means Healing Chronic Diseases, because we think that chronic diseases can be healed, not only treated, they can be healed. As I said, my name is Volker Meisner. I'm the chairman of uh, the German Academy of Energy Medicine. And I'm also a physician. Um, I'm here, a physician is a GP located in Königswinter near Bonn. And my clinic is called a holistic clinic or a clinic for holistic medicine because I want to include all the modalities that we have in informational and energy medicine. And I hope you got some ideas after my lecture how to introduce and how to combine alternative and regular medicine. When we are dealing with our patients, normally we would like to treat them. But if you deal with informational medicine, you think different. The patients are not objects, they are the subjects of the healing journeys. So we don't want to use them only as the objects. They have a right to be involved. It's their responsibility. And I'd like to share some numbers with you. This was an inquiry in about 10 years ago. People were asked, what do you fear? And you see 62% had a fear of cancer and 13% had a fear of heart and circulation diseases and 11% had a fear of getting AIDS. But what are the numbers in reality? What is the morbidity? The numbers are very different. So we have about 23, maybe 25% now, really in cancer patients. We have 50% of death causes caused by heart and circulation diseases. And we have only 0.1% of deaths through AIDS. So people think very different about what's happening and about what they fear. And we would like to give some more information. And information is that what we use as the medicine. So that's why we call it informational medicine. We want to withdraw from disease-oriented, statistic-based medicine for almost everybody towards a healing-oriented medicine for individual. For, let's say it's a personalized medicine, not based on genetics and whatever. It's just based on the personality of the patient. And we want to anchor the perception that each individual determines the, uh, the degree of their own health, because it's their responsibility. But as we know, we look different in our world, and what you see is what you see, and there will not be a second person who sees the same thing. If you see some movement on this slide, you are wrong. There is no movement, but your computer, your brain makes it move, because we do not allow flowers to be in a sun with two shadows. So whenever you look to one of these flowers, the others will move. And that's how we look into our world, and that's how we look out the, on the patients as well. So be aware, do not believe what you see. How can we use these misperceptions and how can we get to a right perception? So we have two hemispheres in our brains who do almost the same, but there are some slight differences. We have, as we say, in a right dominated man or woman, we have the logic brain on the left side and we have the intuitive creative brain on the right side. And they have different tasks and are listed here all these tasks of the left hemisphere, and you see it on the right as well. So they are so completely different. And you will see this when you use the time. Um, we have time on the left side which, um, di which elapses in seconds, in hours, in days. And on the right side we have time where we say, wow, this was a great time. And the Greeks, they have two different terms for that. They have kairos and they have chronos. So chronos is the elapsing time, you know, the chronometer. And kairos means, wow, what a time. So I would like we would have this in the English language or German language as well. So what 
why I'm telling you this. We can do this, in, for an example, with a journey. We have a, a left brain journey. Everybody comes here to see the lectures. So they start from a point A and they arrive at point B and they know where to go and what was the half the distance and when they arrived. But they had a right brain journey as well. So there was motivation. There was a cause to be here. And this is definitely not measurable. So we have this physical universe on the left side and we have the intuitive, the informational universe on the right side. And we are very different. And depending on how dominant you are in your right or left brain, you will see here a dancer turning clockwise or turning counterclockwise. And those of you who see this dancer turning clockwise are right dominant in the brain and counterclockwise means left dominant. So you can try to look at this dancer and switch her to turn from left to right or vice versa. And if you are able to do that, then you can really use your entire brain. So left and right brain has to deal also with being healthy or being healed. We can be healthy with the left side. So we have broken our arm and now we know after four or six or seven weeks it's getting better and after half a year it's done so it's quite normal again. You are healthy. On the right side then you are, you are able to be healed. So it's not only to be treated to get back to your um, status, the status quo. No, you are healed. So you leave all the diseases as a way to live. So if you get a cold or so, then you get ill. This is nothing. This maybe impair your life quality for a short time. But if you feel sick, if you are sick, your personality changes, your character changes. And this is the real thing we want to heal. We want to support people to get out of this trap. So we address more the right hemisphere, we want to support people to get healed, to go on on their healing journey. When we talk about our health, we have to talk about order. Because the body has a very strict principle. It wants to achieve the optimal state in order to survive with a minimal energy usage. And so we can really react appropriately to changing environments. And the quality of the appropriate reactions to a changing environment is the ratio or is, determines our quality of health. So let's be flexible, not rigid. How can we use this? We can ask our heart. The heart is the center. The heart is the center of our being. And it's controlling the body by a lot of means. For example, by this, as you see, by the magnetic field. It's 5,000 times stronger than the magnetic field of the brain. So the heart tries to control everything in a positive way. And the more we think, the more we use our brain, our mind, the more the heart suffers. So let's go back to a heart-oriented, a heart-dominant way of living and healing. We are not in a balance, but maybe we are uh, not in an imbalance as well. So how can we deal with us? We breathe, we exchange energies. A lot of things are going around in us. And there is an amount of energy going in, there is an amount of energy going out. And in the middle, this is the human being, where a lot of turbulences happen at the same time. And this causes kind of a stability. But it's, it's, not, it's a bit tricky because we are not stable. It's a a misalliance, it's a, a stable imbalance that we have, and that's why we call us um, the open systems, the non-linear systems, or dissipative structured uh, human beings. People say that we are physical beings currently making a spiritual experience. I'd say this is not really correct. I'd like to have it the opposite way. We are spiritual beings currently making a physical experience. That's what we are doing. And when we talk about diseases, so we say maybe there is the real cause of a disease in the fifth and sixth dimension. And our diseases that we have are only projections of these fifth and sixth dimension in our four-dimensional world. So we 
store our emotion uh, and our information and whatever we have in a holographic way. Hologram means that the storage, this may be n-dimensional and the information stored is at least n plus one. So if we have a four-dimensional storage in our brain, then the information stored must be of the fifth and the sixth dimension. And this is what we are approaching. But what is the future 5D or 6D medicine expected to offer? And that's what we are talking about at this eighth symposium when we say that we want to heal chronic diseases. This is not possible, I think, in the third and fourth dimension. We have to take the fifth and the sixth dimension into account. How can we do this? So we can use, for example, the Hilbert space of possibilities. If you take the space-time in one axis and the uh, space in the other and time in the other, then you can choose several options. You can choose one of the realities you can imagine. There are several re realities. And if you choose one, which is better, so you can really improve your health. You don't have to live on the way it was planned. You just leave your plane of reality. Choose another one. And there's a Russian author, Vadim Seeland, who has written a series of books uh, named Transurfing. He describes this really well with the space of variance. So it's kind of Hilbert spaces as well. All the possibilities the life could take are there already. So when we talk about energy medicine, we say, yeah, we use energy. We use information and we use energy. And there are different types of energy. We have a very virtual energy, like source energy, which is everywhere but virtual. And we have real energy systems in our body. Maybe, let's say, the brain or the chest, the huge cavities that we have, they are filled with energy. And if all these functions very well, that's okay, that's fine. Nothing happens, nothing bad happens, and we can live a very happy life. But, as it normally is, we have some disturbances, we have some blockages. And these blockages of energy, of the flow of energy, causes trouble, causes pain, causes disease, discomfort. So we want to de-block the energy systems by the right, using the right information, the right energy as well. We are using the source energy, the virtual energy, to de-block real energy blockages, ending up in a healthy life again. When we talk about diseases, we talk about normally symptoms. People come to us because they suffer from symptoms. But these diseases have causes, and these causes have reasons. So we want to address the reasons, go back and treat any illness by the reasons, and then we come back to the third and fourth and even fifth and sixth dimensions, because here we are with the reasons and not with the causes. How can we do that? First, we have to accept that we are uh, bound to our information field. The information field medicine is dealing with this. So every information is there that we need. We have all our beliefs, we have our um, emotions, we have our, at least as the Western type uh, human beings, we have this uh, desire to be logic. You can make a disease out of the setting. You can also create health out of the same setting. You have just to put in the right information. And that's why we are here in this symposium. How can we put the right information into a system which is unstable? How to find the instable, the imbalances? And how to create the energy and the information needed to create a new healthy life? So how can we support people to choose this next level where they can have a healthy life? So where is the area, where is the plane they have to choose to change their lives to a better way? And what does this mean for the therapist? A therapist is not longer a guru. It's not the me trademark. We have to educate ourselves, be educated in a very different way, include a lot of modalities in our things. We have to be humble because when we deal with healing, we are not the masters. The healing is done from different energies, from different spirits. And we have to undergo a transformation to be ready to be such a therapist. 
what do we need else? So we need rapport. We need the ability to find rapport with our patients. We have to feel empathy for our patients and we have to have time for our patients. So if this is all done, the next thing comes. We are not only a physician or therapist. We are also kind of a priest, so spirituality, religion, all this plays a role. And of course we are a healer. And if all these three comes together, you are the physician or the healer, the therapist of the future medicine. And the patient wants to be healed. This is his intention. We don't have the intention, we just want to support. But there is a common band that combines the therapist and the patients, and this is trust. So the patient has to trust the therapist, and the therapist has to trust the patient. So this is future medicine, the basics of future medicine. And if you are a therapist and the patient as a couple, you have this entanglement already, which is known. But if there is a device coming into play, then there are more uh, combinations that show up. And so you have a triangle, and you have more fields of interference. And now the cybernetics of the second order come into play. So the therapist does not only affect the patient and vice versa, no, both of them are affecting the device and we have to know that. So there is no device that does the, the task without being influenced by therapist and by patient. So we have to be trained to use all this, to know this, and all this is part of this symposium we want to talk about. How can we be the, the supporting, the supportive therapists, the most supportive therapists for our patients. There are a lot of modalities now coming up being really modern. Uh, they are 20-25 years old, but kind of they flew kind of under the radar. They were not really recognized. But now since let's say five, maybe ten years, they come to the surface and they improve and develop and they really are effective globally. And as you see, I have put some examples here like NLP or EFT or all these two-point healing methods. Yeah, they come at the right time. We want to have a hands-on, individualized, personalized medicine. Not so much with gadgets and devices, sometimes we will use them, but it's handmade medicine. So it's approaching people like in the old times when you didn't have any electronic um, support. Of course there are technical gadgets as well, support us, like the Nest Provision uh, system or, or these non-linear systems like Etherscan or the uh, CME which is here in the symposium or the Time Weather which is here in the symposium as well. There are a lot of interesting gadgets and the modalities. They are supportive for us, but the main work is done between patient and therapist and the responsibility is at the patient, to be clear. So, the major question is, whose business is it? The patient is not a victim. Believe me, the patient is not the victim, it's the offender. So, the patient has to take over responsibility, to accept him or herself as the offender, and to be the teacher of the inner child and not the victim of the inner child. Everybody, has got the right to live long, happy and healthy just by birth. This is a divine right everybody has got. And we are allowed and we should promise ourselves to make use of this right now and from now on. This is a, a mantra of Gary Douglas which means everything comes into my life with ease and joy and glory. And I think if we deal with happiness we don't have to think about disease because happiness does exclude disease. So we want to be happy and then we are healthy as well. And I like to end with this sentence, deal with the happiness of your patients and of yourself. Then you will end up in a very healthy life. I thank you for your attention.